Real quick, before we start the video, I just want to do this real quick. I just find this to be very, very cool. So I can put on the TASM2 mask with the lenses, but without the face shell. I think that's pretty sick. And like, I don't think it looks that bad, like my regular face. And the, you know, they just kind of click in still. And yeah, I just think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Take them out, click them in, and boom. I don't think I might, I don't even think I'd use the face shell anymore. That's, yeah, it might just be like this from now on. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Hey everyone, today's video, um, I actually wasn't even gonna record uh, this video this week. I didn't think I had enough footage. I wanted to get like all of the pieces done and then, you know, have all that footage and then put it out. But uh, I, I think I have enough footage just to get the point across. You know, I'm still working on everything. Uh, it's been kind of slow recently, but I'm getting there. And you know, I just thought, you know, why not record this video? And you know, I've changed uh, a couple things from what I was originally going to do um, in my first TASM2 video. So I was like, yeah, why not just, uh, Record it now since people have been asking. So to start off, let's talk about the fabrics I'm using. So the blue fabric is pretty much the same. I'm still using Parallel Life Studios uh, screen printed blue fabric. But what I am changing is the red fabric. The red fabric I was originally going to use. I really get an email. I don't even use Peacock. Why is it, why are they emailing me? The original red fabric I was going to use was Spandex World's plain red spandex. Uh, but when I got it, it was a different shade of red than I had intentionally wanted. Um, I don't know why it's the same fabric I got last time, but it's just a different It's more of an orangish red instead of like a pinker red So I was a little upset about that and thanks to sensational Spidey's discord channel. Thanks to them. I found this beautiful Satin red fabric. I got this fabric from stretch house instead of spandex world It's actually cheaper than spandex world too. So that's a plus. It's the right amount of like dark red when it's in the dark and it's the right amount of light red when it's in the light it's very much like the fabric used on the the amazing spider-man 2 suit the actual one used on set it's, it's not 100 percent there but it's very very close and it also just has the right amount of shine i've seen a lot of people use a little too shiny of a spandex and this just has the right amount of shine and madness to it. Oh, also, about uh, the Parallel Life Studios blue fabric that I got. Funny story about that. Oh, and also, again, I am using McLean Krieger's pattern for this costume. If if you don't have McLean Krieger's pattern already, his TASM2 pattern, you can easily find it through the cosplay community right now. You can't actually buy it because sadly McLean Krieger passed away. But yeah, right now you can only really get it through the cosplay community. And if you do try to find it through the cosplay community, um, make sure no one's trying to like sell it and buy it. If you ask around, somebody might have it and you know, join some discord groups and you might find it there. So the first step in transferring the pattern onto spandex is we have to scale the pattern. For my No Way Home uh, video, I taught you guys how to scale your pattern and that apparently confused a lot of people and that is mainly my fault because uh, I just explained it pretty terribly, um, but hopefully this time around uh, I will make it a little easier to understand. So I believe McLean's pattern is set to a person who is 5'10", so that's the base size. It's 5 foot 10 inches. And then what you're gonna do to scale it is you're gonna take your height, so me, I'm like 5'8", and then divide that by 5'10", the base pattern height, and then you're gonna multiply that answer by 100 to get this percentage, whatever your percentage is. And then you're gonna put that percentage into Photoshop when you're scaling it, and that is your scale pattern. That's pretty simple as that. Once that is done, you're gonna save it as a PDF and open it in Adobe Acrobat Reader. You're gonna print it in poster size and make sure that the overlap is at 0% or zero inches. I forgot which one it is, percentages or inches, I'm not sure. Now, for some reason, when I was printing out my No Way Home suit pattern, my Invincible suit pattern, and my Shang-Chi suit pattern, it shrunk the pattern 4% when I would, you know, print it out. And I think that was because of the overlap thing. I think I, because I didn't adjust that before, it just kind of shrunk it down for like percent. 
but now that you know I set it to zero, it just um, it just printed it out at scale. So I'm not sure if that's the reason, but now I don't have to add four percent to all my patterns, and I think that's the part that confused a lot of people. Now, when you print out the pattern, it's going to use a lot of paper and a lot of ink. I would recommend only printing out the pieces you need, not so much every single piece. So all you would really need to print are like one arm, one set of leg pieces, you know, torso, the back, you know, not, you don't need to print every single piece and that'll, you know, help with all the paper uh, and all the ink. Once you print everything out, it's time to tape every piece together. Now I just use my light table to shine light through it and tape it together. I didn't really feel like cutting out all the little sh tiny strips of paper. That would just waste too much time. So I just, taped over it and you know it works just fine now once every piece was cut out into its own section i actually had to go in with a marker and draw every single brick onto the red sections now the reason i had to do that is because the bricks on the actual pattern are very light and that's because we we're trying to focus on the web lines but because i'm drawing on the bricks later i really need to see the bricks so i just went in with a sharpie and drew every single brick i could and that actually really helped seeing it when I put it on the light table. But yeah, after I drew on every brick on here, it was time to draw every single brick onto the red spandex. I taped down the pattern and taped down the fabric and got to work on the light table just drawing every single brick I could. I used this brand of fabric marker I found on Amazon. It's Uchida Marvi marker I use the dark red but once all the bricks are drawn on it's just time to puff paint all the web lines we'll talk about puff painting the suit more in a future episode of this tutorial series so don't worry now for the blue sections it was actually pretty simple all I had to really do was just lay the pattern onto the fabric but the complicated part of this is that the pattern has to be in a certain direction Basically, on the Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit, the bricks flow in a certain direction. So what we... God. Hmm. I really should put everything on vibrate when I'm recording these videos. On the, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit, the brick pattern flows in a certain direction. So we had to match that. Luckily, on McLean Krieger's pattern, he does have the brick pattern accurate. So all we really had to do was just match it up. You know, this isn't the type of cosplay where we can just place it anywhere on the fabric and, you know it'll come out fine. No, we actually had to match up everything and that can get complicated because, you know, this is very expensive fabric and it's very scary to f mess up on this and then have to buy another sheet of it. So to help me, you know, get accurate, like brick flow, the brick pattern accurate, I drew a line onto the pattern and just set it up, uh, try to line it up as best as I could so I can get a straight line with what I'm doing. And then to mark the pattern, and then to mark the paper pattern onto the fabric, I just used uh, a Sharpie. I know a lot more people use chalk or washable marker, but I just have Sharpie lying around, so I just use that. But yeah, guys, that is how I transfer this pattern onto the spandex. It's both very simple, but also a lot of work. You guys can take a different route with it. It's completely fine, but this is how I'm doing it, and this is how it's pretty much worked out. I mean, I have the evidence in this mask. You know, it looks pretty good. I don't know if you can actually see the bricks because it's supposed to be like a little more subtle. But yeah, they're there in person. So, you know, it works. But yeah, the most difficult part is either just having to draw on every single brick or, you know, handling this fabric. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also check out uh, probably Spider-Man's podcast, Spider Bite Cast. There's a Spider Bite podcast, Spider Bite? I was on his podcast and I had an amazing time talking with him. He's a great Spider-Man cosplayer and uh, Spider-Man suit maker. So give him a follow and whatnot. Was, uh, and check out the podcast, of course. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video. And I will see you guys in the next one.